Welcome, you are listening to The Travel Winds, hosted by Pete Kotzbach. This is a weekly interview show about people who travel for work and all the ups and downs that go along with it. Each episode includes a variety of discussions with athletes, business people, musicians, influencers, entertainers, and even regular folks from around the world. Thanks for listening. Here we go. Welcome to the Travel Wins Podcast. Today, my guest, re- recurring guest, is Darlie Newman. How are you, Darlie? I'm doing well. Thanks for having me. It's awesome. I'm, I'm glad we're doing this video this time instead of just audio. I know. It's Welcome been to three the years. world, right? Yeah. Pre-COVID. So that's 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 going back a ways. Yeah, but, no, it's been a while. And I was saying I was saying I haven't seen I haven't seen you, but now I'm getting to sort of see you. So that's the good thing yeah. about it. Yeah, the, the the video was uh definitely uh unexpected. I had I had one guest that that said I will do it, I'll do your show, but I want it to be video. So I had to figure it out. Cause I really wanted the guest and uh it worked out. I mean, so. we've all been figuring it out, right? It's been so interesting. Yeah. Well, yeah, so we, we talked uh, pre-COVID, uh, end of 2019. You you are the host of Travels with Darley, uh, which is going to have season 10 coming up on PBS channels, and then you're streaming on Ovation, uh, the Journey Network, or Ovation Network, I guess. You got a lot coming on. That's Season 10 is... Yes, I'm excited. Yeah. Um, this, this makes 59 half-hour episodes of Travels with Darley, so... It's a lot of content. Um, a lot of content. <laughs> it's a lot of travel. Which is People are like, good, what have you been doing? I'm like, I've been seeing the world. <laughs> Literally. Yeah. I mean, the, the, the season 10, I was I was doing my little research. I'm like, Quebec's pretty cool. Turkey's pretty cool. Delaware. I want to watch, I want to watch the episode of Delaware. I was kind of surprised by that one. Yeah, you know what? I'm trying to hit all the states. And I had not done Delaware. I actually didn't know that much about what was yeah. going on in Delaware before I started to research. But Delaware was really a cool surprise. And so it's not that far. I'm in New York City. So a lot of people on the East Coast, it's super accessible. Yeah. Great restaurants, really cool historic sites. The DuPont mansions and estates are there. So I really liked Delaware. I thought it was cool. Yeah. I mean, it's it's such a little state. It's like, just I, I like I said, I can't wait to watch that. You got... Uh, uh, New Mexico. Yes. Yeah. With um, George R.R. Yeah. R. Martin yeah. interview from the creator of Game of Thrones, which was like really awesome. So super excited. Will watch that, that episode. Oh, yeah, yeah. No, that's a good one. Yeah. yeah. I, I, I haven't watched a single episode of Game of Thrones. I just, I missed it and then I didn't want to get into it. You know, I, I had not seen it until I did watch some episodes yeah, yeah. because I was trying to do some research and you know, I was glad I watched because so I did this adventure train ride that George R. R. Martin and a group of friends have taken this old railroad that was going to be defunct and they've redone it. And they took these cool um, kind of vintage cars and like got artists to do graffiti spray paint. The insides have Game of Thrones theme um, and they have docents and people on there sharing history and you can do different theme train rides. So really cool experience in, around Santa Fe. Is that is that the most amazing thing for you? Because I I know when I travel for work, I always like I went to the um the Dallas house in, when I was in Dallas where they filmed Dallas, and so I took an extra half day and, and did the museum, did the tour, and walked around. And I mean, you you get to do it for a living. It's kind of cool. I mean, yeah, no, I love it. I'm a professional explorer, yeah. traveler, and. I mean, I'm, my job is to find out these places and, you know, chat with the people there, try the food, try the drinks. <laughs> like, yeah. The margaritas I saw. So top digs, right? <laughs> and then uh, uh, Bordeaux, I saw, I mean, mm-hmm. if you're going to go for wine, please. Wow. Yeah. And I mean, I, it's so funny over the holidays, I've just had one of the bottles that got sent to me from yeah. being over there because it's so inexpensive when you're there and so tasty I learned a lot about wine traveling through Bordeaux. So that was really interesting. Just the different, you know, looking at the soil and understanding how they make it. And then cognac too. Cognac is from Bordeaux. Yeah. I I saw saw the face you made. Yeah. (laughs) It was strong. Yeah. I'd be the same way. (laughs) I mean, they're not messing around with that cognac. Like it's like, (laughs) it's, yeah, it's it's strong, but they may, they make it into cocktails too, which I thought was kind of cool. So yeah. But Very just being able to drink that straight. Oof. Yeah. 
<laughs> well, I've, you know, and it's funny because I think now, you know, as I've traveled so much, people know I'm willing to try it. So, yeah. I, you know, in this, in this world of travels with Darlie episodes that I've done now, I was in South Carolina at a moonshine distillery and tried oh, yeah. moonshine straight from the tap. And that was really strong. Yeah. That was strong. That's where it yeah. dries on your face as, as if you spill any. I know, right? It's where your face is frozen because you're really shocked. <laughs> but Rubbing alcohol. It, yeah, it's it's intense. It's intense. And we did, I've done, um, yeah, lots of different places all around the, you know, great. We just did beer tasting in Santa Fe, learning about like, you know, you think of like trying the local things when you're traveling and yeah. why should you do it? But like the water plays so much a role in how the drinks come out, but also the foods you think of the, I was commenting New York bagels. They say they're so good because of the New York water, but Santa Fe, he was using, um, like, I think it was well water, like natural water, but that it was the local water that made the difference in that beer. So I thought that was really interesting. I I've heard that about, um, we, we actually have a pizza shop here in, in the beach cities area and they get their water from New York to make their dough. Oh, cool. Yeah. And I'm like, kind of, that's neat. Of. It's like, I mean, he's, he's, he's trying to stay legit to his roots, but yeah. So he brings the water from New York. It's kind of crazy. That's dedication. Yeah. <laughs> well, it's, 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 it makes their, the difference for them, you know? Totally. That sounds great. What? So 59 episodes. Is there a, an end number or are you just going to keep going until, I mean, I mean, I'm doing another season starting this spring, so I'm already lining it up. It's going to be a fun one too. I'm going to Alabama and trying, I'm doing two half hours on food in Alabama. So I'm basically going to eat my way through the state and try really great seafood, local barbecue, go to farms. I'm, um, I'm, I'm going to give you a tip there. You got to go to LA. So when I, when I go to the rodeos, people always go ahead and I go on from LA and they're like, Oh, lower Alabama. And they go, no, 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 not lower Alabama. Um, Los Angeles. Oh, I love it. They're like, Oh, so, yeah. So LA well, is lower Alabama. I'll be all over that state. So I'll definitely be in lower Alabama. Yeah. Uh, so I'll keep that in mind. I, that's funny though. When you go to mobile, you, you'll, you'll be in LA. Yes. I, that's on my list. So there you go. Should be fun. Yeah, I'm gonna go to Louisiana. Yeah. Lafayette has the Cajun Festival I'm checking out. So how how many states have you been to so far? I have to go back and count. So for the show, I think I filmed in between this show and Apple Trekking, I counted the other. I've I filmed in like 32 states or more. I don't remember, but it's it's been I need to go back and count, but I've done a lot of the US. Yeah. Uh, so I've even done North Dakota now, and I say even North Dakota just because it's, you know, more people go to South Dakota than North Dakota from a travel perspective. And I think it flies under the radar, but I really liked North Dakota. It's beautiful. The Ooh, grasslands. You going to Bismarck? and No, I was over in the Western part of the state. I oh. was by um, Theodore Roosevelt National Park, yeah. Watford I, City. I opened up a store in Dickinson, North Dakota, which is right by the park. Okay. So you know it then. Yeah. Landscapes are gorgeous. I did. There's the Matahe Trail, Badlands. Yeah. yeah. Really. And actually, I, I flew into Bismarck. I drove down into um, Rapid City. I wanted to see Mount Rushmore. Why not? I'm there. And, and the, and the, and the uh, Native American one. Um, and then I came up through Sturgis and then went into Dickinson and did my work for a couple of days and then drove back from Dickinson over to Bismarck. You got around there too. Yeah. Well, I, I'm like you. I'm like, I want to see things. If I'm going to, I used to fly to places, darling, and, and I come home and people be like, oh, did you go there? And I'm like, no, why would I go? I went to here to go to work. And they're like, oh, you should have gone to the Louisville Bat Company. And I'm like, what oh, is that in Louisville? And they're like, yeah, well, yeah. So, because I was just, I would go for work, work, work. And then all of a sudden I started opening things up and I'm like, oh, I went to the Muhammad Ali, Muhammad, Muhammad Ali Museum in Louisville. Hmm. what did the bat tour where they actually show you, let you hit some of the bats and all that. And I'm like, just by taking an extra half day to go do things. That's so cool. I, I think that that's neat that you do that. And a lot, a lot more people that I talk to are doing that as well. So yeah. it's, it's an increasing trend in the travel industry and in the travel world. Well, I think that's, I, that's where I'm your excited. show really comes in handy because like, I mean, I literally watch all these travel shows because I don't, I'm like, 
when I go to South Carolina, I now, now I know places to go. If I go to Delaware, you know, I know I want to go see the fort, you know, and I want to go see all these things now because of shows like yours. Well, and it's funny because like, for instance, I haven't seen that many travel shows on Delaware and I haven't really yeah. North Dakota. I did research before and I really couldn't find a lot of content that was like travel video, like travel video shows. Yeah. So I thought that was interesting. Um, I think it makes it valuable for research for people because you can watch it and see the places and, you know, know who to talk to. I keep telling people to go say hello to, to different people at restaurants and places and they're doing it because I'm getting then emails and, and things and Instagrams and all that from people that I've filmed with. And they're like, Hey, somebody came in. And <laughs> Isn't that crazy? I, Cause I get some of that too. I, I, I have guests from the first seat, my first year. And they'll send me a DM saying, hey, I just got a new client because of, uh, they watched, they listened to our episode. And I'm like, what? That was four years ago. Yeah, that, it's great. I mean, yeah. it really helps people figure out what to do and and do it in a more interesting way. Because there's a lot of, I mean, this, this season that's coming out has some very unique and interesting travel experiences, yeah. which is fun. Well, the drone shot is now kind of the standard for travel videos, it seems like. Which I mean, back in the day, was that you'd have to get a helicopter. Or, which I mean, now the drone shots, they're crazy. I lo I love drone shots. I was, I mean, so I've been doing this for so long that I we did like when I was in Africa, we used, we had a helicopter to film in the Okavango Delta. Uh, we actually did a trade because we didn't have big budgets to get a helicopter. Yeah. So I traded this guy. I was like, we actually like filmed him doing his safari stuff in exchange for being yep. able to use the helicopter. And it was so, it was valuable. Those episodes won a daytime Emmy award for the photography. And I think the helicopter had something to do with it. Of course. <laughs> and now you have drone shots, you know, which is, which are just as, if not more amazing, because they can actually get different angles than, than a helicopter could. The footage is beautiful. And yeah. I, I mean, and just seeing it from a different perspective is really interesting. How many people do you travel with when, when you, like when you go to Istanbul? It's small. So there's, I've had a small crew this entire time. It's just four of us, including me. Wow. So, I mean, when, when we're like, for instance, in, in, in it's been renamed to Turkey, a, by the way, Turkey. Yeah. A. Um, so when we were in Turkey a and in Istanbul, uh, we did have a local guide that helped us yeah, and yeah, traveled with us the entire trip and helped do translation and get us through the airports. Cause we were, we we're traveling with gear and stuff. So it can be a bit hard in some locations. We always get questioned at the airports, but yeah. Yeah. How, how much backup gear do you take with you? Because I mean, when you're in Turkey, you might not be able to get the wireless remote or whatever, if it breaks down. Yeah, we try to always, we do try to have a backup drone when we can because those things tend to get <laughs> yeah fall out of the sky ocean. somewhere yeah. in the ocean. But uh, but you know uh, we have a second camera, so we I've had to fix things in weird locations. I was in Ethiopia trying to get a camera part that yeah. was interesting and trying to troubleshoot. Troubleshooting is the hardest. Our tripod often doesn't make it because it's oversized. Oh. So I've been to Turkey A now. This was my third trip. And on one of the previous trips, actually, to film for my other series, Equitrekking, the tripod did not make it. And we were in, uh, we had gone from, you know, actually, we went from Jordan to Istanbul to Cappadocia. And we're in Cappadocia, or some people say Cappadocia. And, the you know, it's it's more remote. It is, there's a lot of travelers and people there, but we actually got a tripod from a local TV station to use. Oh, they wow. Let us borrow it. Yeah. <laughs> it, that's just, you gotta be thing. resourceful, right? You have to be resourceful, but we were asking, it was funny because we were asking in one of the villages at the hotel, we were saying it, we're like, we need a tripod. And they showed up with like a small little, like one that you yeah. put a still camera on. And we were like, that's not going to work for this. <laughs> You're like, it's this big. Yeah, we're like, we need a big tripod. So then they found one and it was a local TV station. Let us use it for a couple of days. So kind of cool. Very nice people all over the world. I've found it's everyone always says, oh, 
you know, and, and, oh, do I feel unsafe or this or that? I've definitely felt unsafe and had my run-ins with, you know, usually it's danger from nature or animals, but yeah, yeah. <laughs> that, or, or the stunts that I'm doing because I seem to be a side stunt woman now. Any more um, bungee jumps? Not yet. From, from uh, the cow tower? No, this season I do in um, Quebec. I was in the Eastern townships and I did treetop cycling. There you go. It wasn't really that dangerous, except that when you when you start to go down, you really pick up speed. Yeah, and that works. It's very important to brake, which I was not familiar with the bicycle contraption I was on, and realized too late that it was handbrakes. So mm-hmm. <laughs> losing the pedals, flying through the trees. I saw. There. I saw that you you took your feet off the pedals. You're just like oh, I'm going down. I couldn't. They were going so fast. Yeah. I couldn't keep them on there. And then I did a zipline roller coaster at this ski mountain called Mount Mount Sutton, and that was so fun. And I you I don't get scared by a lot now. And yeah. some of the ziplining usually I'm like mm, it's fine. I'm not I'm not gonna it's not gonna make me scream. But this was so fast, so fun. I would recommend it if you love adventure. The Where's it at? Mount coaster. Sutton. Mount Sutton in Quebec in the Eastern Townships. It's not far from the Vermont border. You could drive over the border. It's a couple miles from the border. So fun experience. Yes. Yeah. For adventure lovers. You, you're going to have a, 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 is it so cool that, I mean, you're literally creating stories that, that you get to share for, I mean, you're, you're creating memories by doing your job. I mean, it's not like you're sitting in an office doing accounting all day, but it's kind of cool. It's great. I, I've seen so much now. Yeah. I, I do look at it in a different way. And being that it's not 10 years, but it's season 10. So I started this yeah. show in 2016. And so 59 half hours later, and then I did 35 half hours of travel of my other show, uh, Equa Trekking. I've seen a lot and met a lot of people now. And it's just, it's so valuable. I just, I feel like I've learned so much. And I love that the episodes are are sharing that they're not yeah. i will say it's not just a travel show it's deeper than that because the people that i've been meeting and interviewing they're so fascinating and they share so much about life life lessons i was going to ask you what do you think uh, out of all the traits that you have what's made you successful because it's i, I know it's a, it's a smiling and happy and travel but it's it's a tough road that you've you've chosen <laughs> i mean it it's, looks it looks fun on tv I'll put it that way. Well, so, and I do, I've done this independently. I'm an independent yeah. producer. It's my production company. And people are, always say, where do they send you next? And I'm like, I'm sending myself. I'm no. picking the places. So no. <laughs> it's a lot of work. Uh, but I, I think I'm super persistent and creative, I guess. And okay. I think also that the main thing I would say is just believing in something. Because And if you have, I always tell people if they have, something that they want to do, if they have a book they want to write or or a business they want to start to just get started because it does, t- as we all know, it takes a while for things to gain traction. So you really have to be persistent and stay with it. But if you believe in it, I've always believed in the stories that I tell. And because it's not really me just telling the stories, it's I'm, I'm just asking questions and then people are sharing. Yeah. It's like what you're doing. <laughs> That's exactly what, like what I'm doing. I, I feel the same way. It's like, I, I, like you said, it's persistency, right? I mean, people are like, oh, how, how did you get this person on the show or this person? I'm like, and I told you prior, it's like, it took 18 months to get some of my guests on the show. You know, I've had guests fly out, say no, and then we become friends or friendly and then they'll do the show. But that takes six months, nine months, a year. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. I mean, well, I think it's a testament to what you're doing too, though, and to being a good listener, which is often... I'm hosting, but I'm not necessarily talking a little ton of, you know, I talk, I talk now more on the show, I guess, than I used to, but sometimes that's the nature of where I am. If, if I don't have yeah. great English speakers or, yeah. you know, just explaining something sometimes takes a little time, but. But it's still, it's still worthwhile. I mean, so I, I like, you like, you're persistent. What, what other traits do you think make, make you a successful I would say creative, creative, 
You know, one thing I think that's interesting that I value learning throughout school was writing my like good writing skills. It sounds again, yeah. being able to tell a story and, and take, because we interview people. And when I talk to them, the George R.R. R. Martin interview yeah. was 45 or 50 minutes long. And I had to cut it down to like 10 minutes or less. So I think. It was less than that. And that's so much content to deal with and trying to pick out the best things and yeah. weave it together is, is a whole thing. Yeah. I was going to say, I was going to ask you, so out of 59 half hour episodes, how many hours of content do you think that makes up? Oh gosh. Well, three times, four times. It's more than 40 terabytes on of hard drive storage. I can tell you that because I, I just, just filled a 40 terabyte hard drive RAID system. Backup. Yeah. I'm actually, I think at 45, cause I had to go to other hard drives. So I'm definitely getting a lot of footage. A lot goes on the cutting room floor. I was going to say, do you, so out of a 30 minute show, which is actually what 20, I don't know, maybe PBS it's full. 26 30. minutes. Yeah. Okay. So out of 26 minutes, is that, do you think it's four hours of, of, of editing you had to go down to 26 minutes or is it three hours or. Um, probably. Hours? Yeah. It's our, it's probably. So usually a show is like two and a half. I get, I'm speaking in terabytes, but it's like two and a half terabytes or sometimes yeah. three. Um, so of that, I would have to look at how many hours that is, but it's probably like three, four, maybe it's three, four hours when you look at all the drone footage and stuff, because sometimes yeah. that they're longer segments. I mean, Greg, who does my main photography, Greg Barna, who's amazing. Yeah. So talented, such a great person. He, uh, he's more of a concise shooter. I actually had to start to tell him, keep it rolling because I love the behind the scenes. And I think I put them in the credits, but people tell me that's their favorite part of the episodes because it's the outtakes. And those Absolutely. are funny. Those are the ones where, you know, you see what's going on behind the scenes. So it's a lot of, it's a lot of footage. Well, uh, you had talked about uh, uh, alternate platforms to put your content out on. Um, and I think that's where maybe that, you know, the, the full George R. R. Martin interview, would you be able to put that on a separate content on a separate platform, but then still direct them back into the travels with Darley show. That's what I'm looking at now because yeah. I, I, I was thinking about, and so, cause I love to share some of the longer, I mean, 30 minutes is a long content thing to be able to share on television at this, in this yeah. world we live in because our attention spans are so short. Things have gotten shorter, shorter, but I think that there's so, there's so much that was interesting in all the interviews I've done that I didn't get to put in. So I yeah. definitely want to try to do something with that content. That'd be, that'd be interesting. I mean, it's more work <laughs> editing for a different platform is, I mean, I, cause I do that with my show. I'm trying to take a, like a section of this and put it on it in a TikTok format or, a, or, you know, Instagram real format or Facebook, you know, it's like, Oh my gosh, I'm doing that. I'm doing that. I'm definitely doing it for social media. So I feel you. Yeah. It's fun though. Well, and, and if anyone ever wants to follow me, I post a lot in New York city too. If you want to go a to lot. New York, <laughs> I mean, I, that's a lot of my personal stuff that I'm doing and it's fun. I'm, I'm finding some cool places up here. I've been up here a couple of years now and I'm really discovering the city. And you're still finding things. Isn't that crazy? I, I do that in LA. Yeah. I mean, we're, we're going to a speakeasy for uh not new year's, new year's day, new year, the eve of new year's eve or whatever. But, you know, it's just like you find different things and all of a sudden you're, you talk to people like, oh, you should go see that. And you're like, what, what is that? You're like, well, go through this bookcase. <laughs> That's to the left. And you're like, what? So. One thing that I love, too, I've noticed and as of late is I've been sharing some of that on social. Then other people see it and then they tell me about other things. Yeah. Like, Yo, you should go check this out. And then you have a whole new rabbit hole of discovery. That's I mean, that's the cool part about your job, right? It's like. I mean, you're literally, you're, you're there to, to find interesting things for other people to go visit and see. Yeah. I'm happy to do it. It's a pretty cool job. It's fun. It's how, great. How does it affect your, your personal life? Cause I mean, you're on the road months, weeks at a time. 
it, you know, it's, it's, it's a little difficult. So I just have a cat you know, <laughs> at this point. I have this cat to take care of, which sounds minor. Everyone says it's cats not. independent. She's not independent. <laughs> Phoebe, who I do little stories with too, is very needy. So I actually had to have someone living at my apartment over the summer when I was traveling. Yeah. I had a French uh, intern. She was interning for France's government office and she stayed in my house and I I was laughing because I was telling people that the cat was going to learn French while I was gone, Um, even though BB is deaf. So she might be learning French, reading, reading French lips or something like that. But um, no, it, it, it makes it difficult. It's funny because I have so many friends though in this large network that I always am building. But I was at my local coffee shop in New York the other day, and I ran into one of my neighborhood friends who knows everybody in the neighborhood, and he organizes all this social stuff. And he said, oh, yeah, there's something coming up on Friday, but I didn't invite you to it because I didn't think you were in town. And I said, well, put me back on your list. (laughs) I said, I'm here now, and I'm here for a bit. So you have to really stay in front of people to keep, you know, a lot of personal relationships going. I'm the same way because I... I have a a good friend of mine. He he gets invited to a lot of cool stuff. And I'm like, just just ask. I go, you know, I might be gone and I have been gone and haven't been able to do some of the very cool things that he gets to do. But I'm the same way because he's like, I don't ever know if you're in town. I'm like, well, then call me, text me. I know. Yeah, I mean, people get tired though because I'll, I will say no so many times. But then I'm like, but isn't it fun when I say yes? (laughs) So keep me on the list. (laughs) I'm the same way. It's like, and now I, I've kind of got into the, um, it's corny, but uh, the Yes Man Theory, you know, the oh. Jim Carrey movie. Yes. Because I, I, I say yes to a lot of things. And now all of a sudden it's like, I, I don't really want to go. And I go and I'm like, I had the best fucking time. I met so many cool people. Or I'm doing the same thing. It's so funny because when I moved to New York, I said I was on a year of yes. And that's the year I did yeah. World's Highest, Spongy in Macau. I did the climbing wall in Reno. Did like yes to my World's. show. Yeah, I did all this. I did yes to your show. I just said yes to everything. And I, I, and then for a while, you know, I was traveling a lot and I wasn't saying yes, but now I'm back again and all this holiday season and coming up, I've just been saying yes to things. So my schedule is someone asked me to, I gave, I had like an hour long coffee with some the other day and she said, Oh, can you, she said, can you not hang out and stay longer? I said, no, I said, this schedule is tight girl. Yeah. <laughs> I said, oh, we got coffee an hour. I gave you an hour. I said, I got to get the next thing now. It's the way it works. So, you know. yeah. So keeping it moving, but I, I think it's, you're right. I'm, I'm saying yes to things and it's been so fun. Well, it, uh, I, I get asked a lot, like, uh, how do I get this guest or how do I get that guest? And I'm like, I ask, you know, but then like I, I, I interviewed Emmett Smith, the running back from uh, the Dallas Cowboys, you know, because I said uh, he, he had a, uh, an opening in Las Vegas. And the guy goes, hey, if you want to go, if you're going to be in Vegas, I can get you a meet with him. And then obviously we can do the interview afterwards. I go, I'll be in Vegas. <laughs> I I flew over, you know, it's a 45 minute flight from LA, but I flew over at three o'clock and I had a plane nine o'clock coming home. So I was there for six hours, met him, talked to him, got to do the interview. Yeah. But, yeah. I did a live stream not last summer, but the summer before it was, I interviewed the French ambassador at his residence cool. and it was a really cool opportunity. I was so excited about it. But I had just been traveling a lot and I lost my voice, which rarely happens, but I had literally no voice. And so it was two days before I was going and I was determined to make this interview happen. This is a big deal. It's going to be live streamed and there's all these people. And so I did not speak for two days. (laughs) I sat there with hot tea, you know honey going down my throat, throat lozenges. And, and I went there and when I got, I'm sitting there right before it and I'm trying to then speak a little bit to make sure I can still. So, but, and I managed to pull it off and it was fine, but it was funny because I was like, Oh my gosh, my voice, this is a problem. I interviewed um, a guitar player and she's an all girl group. And she said that the, the lead singer, when they're on tour, well, you know, not speak for a day or two to give her voice a break. So she goes, we've had to learn how to do like basic, basic sign language while we're on the tour bus because she doesn't want to speak. It's the same thing. Yeah. It's amazing. And, you know, it's funny that and that's the perils of the line of work we're in sometimes, I guess. 
Well, what there are many other perils too, but yeah. What are some of the um, unfun things that have happened on your show while you're filming? Uh, so I did get a mysterious bug bite in Wisconsin and ended up in the ER. That that wasn't fun. I always said uh, that the uh, the the Wisconsin state bird should be the mosquito. It was yeah, and this I don't think they don't know what this was. It what they thought it was Lyme. Maybe I had gotten Lyme or Lyme yeah. disease first, a so tick bite. But then, and they treated me for that. But then it wasn't that, and I still don't know what it was. But I was sick for days and had high fever. It was oof, it was wretched. <laughs> it was feeling so that's a peril of because often I'm out in nature and yeah. you know Were you doing, in Madison or. Oh no, I was in the Schwamigan Nicolay National Forest, oh. which is millions of acres in the northern part of Wisconsin. Yeah. And it's it's rugged up there, you know. And when you're I was mountain biking, and that was, you know, it's so funny because I was wearing long sleeves and long pants everywhere. And then I do the mountain biking. First day I have short sleeves on, but you forget I'm covered in bug spray, bug repellent, but you can't you're mountain biking and you can't like swat things off as you're trying to go through the trees. Yeah. So inevitably I got, you know, eaten alive a little bit and yeah, it something, it could have been that or could have been the leeches that were stuck to my feet as I tried to do log rolling and got out of the water and took off my water shoes and my I had leeches all over my feet. And I was like, someone could have warned me <laughs> about this. No one told me about leeches. The leeches would have been nice to know about. <laughs> yeah. So, so I, 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 I got tore up there. I went to Madison and, and to the Dells and all that. And uh, the, the mosquitoes loved me. They loved me too. And I was a little afraid to get out of the car that we were in because we drove into the woods. This We were in the woods the whole time, basically, on, these shoot, on this shoot. And we drove into the woods on this one day. We we're about to go to this mountain biking adventure. And literally there are like the gigantic flies and mosquitoes just pounding on the windows of the car. Yeah. Like that's why I said they should be the state bird. Crazy. <laughs> like, I'm like, are we getting out here? Like, <laughs> Is this where we're doing the mountain we're biking? Stopping, are we? I was like, oh, we're, we're going, they're like, you'll be fine when we're moving. I'm like, yeah, but we're filming. So we're going to be stopping and starting quite a bit here. Not sure we're going to be fine, but you know, well, that's a, uh, you don't have to go back there now. You already went there. <laughs> you can see the episode exactly you can watch what um what, what places are you what places outside of the states do you still want to visit well i personally want to go to thailand okay i haven't been and i've been to cambodia but not thailand i'm a big fan of thai food it sounds very minor but i really want to go and try the thai food in thailand sure I think it's I, I think it's so different when I was in Hong Kong eating the Cantonese cuisine it was so different than our food we're getting from our local you know Chinese restaurant in the states yeah. and it really made me appreciate trying food in in the in the native area in the local setting and I so Thailand's on my list I want to go down to um Peru I haven't been to Peru and I think that would be fascinating have you been to Russia? I haven't been to Russia and I would like to, I, so right now, not a great time to go, but yeah, yeah, I think it would be fascinating. I think riding the train there, I read this book that this NPR correspondent wrote. It's like called Midnight Train in Siberia or something like that. And it's fascinating about him riding the train. Oh, I'll in, send you another one. There's a comedian named Bert Kreischer and, uh, he he did a whole half hour bit on the train in Russia because he, he it's it, it's comedy, but basically okay. he be, he befriended the Russian mafia on the train while he was a, a senior at Florida State on a, on a Russian trip, and uh, it's a good story. But so when you say Russian train, I think the, the the machine. I mean, it sounds like such an adventure. Yeah, Kurt Angle. You know the wrestler Kurt Angle, uh, WWE wrestler, gold medalist. Uh, I always ask, I said, what's, which, what's your most influential place? And he said, Russia. Out of hmm. all the places he'd been to in the whole world, he said, not so much the government of Russia, but the people of Russia treated him so fantastic when he was traveling for wrestling. I was just at a Lower East Side holiday potluck festive thing. Then I did bring the karaoke microphone that I was given as a oh. present from my photographer oh. as a joke. But I, and there were two, 
um, entertainers there from for for Russian. And it was funny because I had this stupid karaoke microphone and I was like, we're gonna do karaoke. And then of course they're professional singers. So yeah. they did the first number and we were all sitting there going, I'm not going, next. I'm not, not next. me. <laughs> I'm not doing it. Yeah. So I think Russia would be cool for you too. You know, obviously. I, I think it would be fascinating. I mean, I'd love to get to as many places as possible. I'm definitely continuing with another season this year. I'm planning it out now. I'm going to do a lot of the U S I'm doing a bunch between Virginia and Rhode Island states oh, nice. and, you know, going out to Alabama, Louisiana. I'm hoping to get back to Korea to do another episode in Korea. Have you, have you done an uh, episode in Japan? I have. It's been a number of years, but it's in one of my, I think it's in third or fourth season of the series, Tokyo. You can watch it on Amazon Prime, actually. Okay. Um, so, and, and Wondrium, which is another platform that the shows are, you can watch all the episodes on there now, which is great. And Tokyo is one of them. Really great. If you love wonderful food, you should watch the Tokyo episode because we ate really well. Yeah. We, we, we had a, my wife and I had a, a trip with my two daughters and their significant others for April of 2020. And so we were like, I mean, to get everybody's schedule, you know, and then COVID hit and they shut the island down in March or end of March. And we're just like, oh my God, I guess we're not going. So, so we're still itching to go. So we're going to try and reschedule. Now my daughter's pregnant, so I'm going to be a grandpa. And oh, like, now congrats. that's all changing. So. Congrats. That's so exciting. Yeah, three, uh, two and a half more months. Wow. Okay. Yeah. Cool. First little granddaughter. So it'll be cool. She can go eat some sushi when she's in. We're game. Right. Yeah. It's, but it's it, like, you, you know, it's just yeah, scheduling six different people's work schedules. It's tough. Yeah. We'll figure it out. Yeah. What, you'll figure. How, how did uh, COVID affect the travels with Darley Empire? Yeah, so it was, it was good and bad. And the bad yeah. was that we didn't get to travel for a number of months. Uh, but the good was that a lot of people found the series because they were looking for travel content. Cause yeah, that's right. We couldn't go anywhere. So they a lot of people, I think, found the series during COVID when they were Googling and looking for new things to watch. So sure. in that respect, it was, it was good. But it was tough because uh, I wasn't able to travel for the show for a while yeah. so well I, I was gonna say because you, you said you're getting ready to, to start filming season 11 i mean you're what nine months out do you think i mean how how, how far out are you like when so, did you film season 10 which is coming out this month so season 10 was filmed between um june and september of this year so you know, we stopped filming in September and then October, November is really quick editing because they were turned in starting in early December. So a lot of work, you know, to put the episodes together because. Because it is. It is because it is because there's so much content. Yeah. And, there's, and then there again, there was so much more with the Bordeaux episodes. We filmed more than we could put in. But the, I'm coming out actually with short video shorts that I'll be putting on social, but also, you know, YouTube and Facebook and all that of stuff that I, some of it didn't make it into the episodes. And I'm just going to put it out coming up as, in, during the debut of the new season. So yeah, can stuff. well, I, I think that's the, I mean, without the advent of technology, I wouldn't be, I mean, I, I mean, my shows around the world all because of the internet and, and the ease of technology. I mean, it's no longer, it's, it's easier, I would say, to, to put out more more content. It's amazing. There's so many choices. It's almost yeah. too much in a way. You have to really, I mean, I'm doing that now where I'm saying, what, what else can I do with this content? Where else can the shows go? And it's just a lot of different platforms. Well, that's because, I mean, it, it, that's the cool part about you owning your, your content, you know, with your own production firm. I mean, that's, you get to do with it what you want. Yeah, no, it's great. It's 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 very different uh, way to do things than the and then and now that's the way a lot of people are doing it. But it wasn't that way a couple of years ago. Yeah, literally, it's been changing so rapidly. Keeping up with it's been. I think it's fun. It's a new challenge. I mean, I wasn't when Instagram came out. 
I was really pop. I was really doing a lot on Twitter and Facebook. And I said, Oh gosh, I don't want to go to another platform. And I, I waited and waited and then I got on it. And now I love it because the reels and the short videos, I find just so much fun and they're funny and it's a great way to share something different and make it short and sappy and fun. And I love that you can add fun music as well. So great. But, uh, have you done much with TikTok yet? I'm on TikTok, but I'm really kind of doing Instagram and then doing TikTok. Yeah. But I'm I'm on there too. I, I do like Instagram better right now, personally, just probably because I've been on there longer and have better connections. But I'm I'm on the I'm on the TikTok now too. <laughs> well, I, the, the TikTok thing is weird. I, I did a stupid shark video. It wasn't a shark. It was it was if you go to the end of Manhattan Beach Pier, I'm looking at surfers in the water, and then right above me is a sign that says warning you know great white sharks in the area you know you're not allowed to catch them they're a protected species hmm. and i'm like so i'm like the juxtaposition of here's a shark warning and then here's 20 guys surfing in the water right above the war that that thing has like a quarter million views and i'm like i'm just roller skating on the strand and i got a quarter million views from this stupid thing i, I interview other people and it gets like 200 views i don't know i don't know it's well it's all based on these algorithms and then yeah. And of course, people do love some of the more extreme things. So that sounds like it definitely fit the bill for. Yeah. It, for just hit the, it hit the algorithm. All of a sudden, I was like, you know, it was one of those weird things where you're like watching it just go up. You're like, what's going on? Like, I'm getting all these notifications. I'm like, I have no idea. Whatever. It's fun. I mean, I mean you're in that same boat though, right? I mean, you're, you're always you know, the SEO and you're trying to figure out. How, how to be on top of searches for, for Delaware or for, you know, New Mexico. And then. Yeah. I found that I'm less focused on the website end of it now, just because I'm doing so much on social media yeah. and so many people are living on those apps and yeah. on them all the time. It's a great way to reach people and, and different type of content again that you can put out there. And I want to curate it better though, because I have a lot of stuff on Instagram now that I think is really actually could be useful, but I need a better way to, and I'm sure Instagram's working on it. They have the story highlights, but I want to have, it'd be nice if you could almost uh, put it into better playlists, kind of like YouTube. Yeah. I was going to, I mean, it, it's so interesting is a good word for it uh you know where where do you put your focus into you know it's like I, I i didn't do i didn't do videos i didn't do youtubes for i think two years and all of a sudden the guy's like how could you not you got to put your stuff even if it's audio only just put it up and i'm like god oh, some more work and he goes and all of a sudden i'm just getting fourteen thousand plays and you know ten thousand plays. i'm like oh my god why was i not doing that before well, I think you have to pick your platform, so because yeah. you could you could be everywhere, and it's funny that some people are so popular on one platform and not on another. Yeah, they're they're really doing well on certain realms. Do Do you think being on PBS is a good thing for you versus you know trying to get it on a Discovery Channel or one of the other you know history channels or? I think it's been great over the years because it's, it reaches so many people. Yeah. And, and you know, you can still watch it on a traditional television signal and then, but also it's streaming and doing all those things now as well. So I think it's been great because I've been on for over a decade now on PBS stations. Yeah. So I think it's been a great way for people to discover the show and then find it somewhere else as well. But it's definitely, it, it's, it's reached out to people and I really like it because I can plan my content the way I want to, which sounds, you know, a, like a thing, but it, it's, it's, it's really nice to be able to do that. I was going to say how much, I, that was my next question was how much input d d does a PBS or, you know, uh, uh, ovation say, Hey, we can't use that. Or we want it more like this. Do they give you any in that input or at this point they just go, we, we, we trust you. We know what you're going to do. Yeah, at this point, I think there's a lot of trust that's been built up because I've been, you know, this is my second big series, Travels with Darlie. I had Echo Trekking. The shows have won a lot of awards and it's not just awards, but, you know, we've 
I think people know that they can trust the content that we're giving them, especially yeah. because when you do a show like this, because you're filming it and it's, it's not a reality show, but it is real. Yeah. You know, we have not real scripted. people. On. Yeah. It's not scripted. I have real people on. I don't give them a script. I don't even normally give people questions beforehand. Yeah. Sometimes people ask me for questions and I go, Oh, really? <laughs> Same way. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. Cause I don't know what I'm going to ask before I get there sometimes. I mean, I, I do think about it with some interviews, but a lot of them I don't because I get, I get to the setting and I talk to someone for two minutes and usually within this first two minutes, I hear something that's going to scope and change the way that the interview is going to roll out. And I think that is what makes it fun and it's, yeah. that it's not planned out. I, I, I'm see, I'm the same way. I mean, I, like I have my, my basic questions and ideas that I want to, but like I've already talked to you on some of those. So I'm I like talking about other things. It's just, I don't know. But see, I'm not, I'm not uh, restricted by, I'm not going, I got 26 minutes. I got you know, kind of an open channel. Yeah. That's a little different, but it's the same. I, I, I don't know how I would do. I, I um, Have you ever watched the show Hot Ones? Mm-mm. It's a, a a foodie guy, and, and uh, he 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 did the whole show on YouTube. And when he started, it was you know it was real, really small. And now he's got Gordon Ramsay, and now he's getting forty million views and this and that on YouTube. And he says I he wouldn't change it. Like he doesn't want to go to an HBO or Showtime because then they would tell him what kind of content. So he goes, I'm doing just fine the way I am. I don't I don't want anybody to tell me how to do my show. That's great. And there's a lot of freedom in that. And that's what's neat about the way we can do content now and put it out there. I, you know, Sometimes people say, oh, how do I get a show on television? I'm like, well, just start it on one of the platforms and just do it there. You know, well, you don't even have to. That was, see, that was one of my things is, you know, people come up to me, how do you start your podcast? I'm like, well, I just started recording. It's like, you know, you hit record, you talk to people and, you know, four and a half years later, you kind of figure it out. But is it the same way for you? The way, I mean, cause I, I have people, oh, I'd love to travel for work. I mean, if I could travel for my job, oh my God, it'd be so great. My go, you know, it's still work. Oh yeah. No, it's still work, but I think it's so interesting. Yeah. I wouldn't want to do anything else. I mean, yeah, that's why I love it. It's an adventure and I feel that life is so short. Yeah. I wouldn't want to be doing anything else. If you had told me I need to go sit in an office right now and you know, run numbers or something, which is, would not be the best job for me. A eh? <laughs> running those numbers, probably not great. Um, but I would say no, because I'm only living once. So I think, you know, yeah. if, and if I get reincarnated, I want to be my cat BB because she's got a pretty sweet life. I want to be my dog Louie because he's snoring right behind me. So yep, yep. It's like I, I walked him, I fed him. He's good. He's good for a few hours. Yeah. Till lunchtime. Easy peasy. Yeah. Um, with all the shows, do you, do you see an, an end point or is there a, another I, iteration of, of what you're doing? I mean, a I movie so. or a book? We'll see. This year, there might be a book and a podcast. I don't know. I'm working on figuring that out now, but I see the iteration is also, I've been doing a lot of shows in, in the last few years that are focused on history. Yeah. And I find it fascinating and some things that I didn't think I would find so interesting have been really enriching. I did two episodes on World War I sites in France. Well, that'd be cool. Really cool. I did a civil rights trail um, in Alabama. Fascinating. I like interviewed people that lived through the movement. I was able to do um, the Liberty Trail in South Carolina, which is we're really, you know, looking at all this great history related to the Revolutionary War. So, uh, yeah, I'm doing a lot more on history and I'm really enjoying that. So I kind of see the thing about my show right now, which is kind of great, is that the episodes can be different. And there a lot of them are one is different from the next. So if you like history, you might want to watch the Civil Rights Trail or the Liberty Trail or the, you know, if you if you love food, you're going to want to see these Alabama episodes I'm working on because this is going to be tasty yeah. <laughs> or look at the Hong Kong Macau because there's some great food in those episodes or Tokyo. So a lot of different themes. And Bordeaux with the wine and adventure in Wisconsin, Wyoming, Colorado. Yeah. 
Yeah. Yeah. Here, here's the question I, I want to ask you because I, I, I get asked this. Do you think your show should be more specific and then you would gr grow that audience of, of foodies or, or history? But for me, like, like, cause I get told, oh, you should only interview business people or you should only interview athletes or, or, or musicians because then people that want to follow musicians would, would follow your show. But I'm like, I want to know about everything. So it's hard for me to, I don't want to just interview football players. It's like, I, I feel that too. I, so I did, I was specific for a while with equal tracking. Yeah. Of course, stuff riding around the world's pretty specific. Yeah. Uh, and I really enjoyed that, but that show had a lot of diversity within it that, I think people would always not think about because of the way I did brand that show. Yeah. But uh, I would do, I would go into more, I'm in a lot of niches within the show now that, yeah. you know, people could seek out, but I think uh, and I would, I would go into some more like, you know, short topics or things that were specific moving forward too. But right now I'm doing what you're doing and really enjoying yeah. the diversity of it. Well, I wonder like, like, could you, I'm just thinking out loud here. You know, if, if you go to uh, what state haven't you been to? Uh, you know, South Dakota. <laughs> okay, so if you go to South Dakota, you know, you could do um, what was it doing during the Civil War, right? So you could do a clip on that for for that section while you're filming your travels with Darley for for the food or whatever, or vice versa. You know, you could do a food specialty. Mm-hmm. It's, but it's more it's separate content it's a lot more work but you're already there i don't know yeah yeah it's it's there's a lot of leeway yeah makes it fun i mean i've been to alabama to film i did the two episodes on civil rights trail now i'm going to go back and do food but and i'm sure yeah. i could go and actually i'd been there previously and i did more general travel and i was in mobile and i was in you know some other birmingham and looking yeah. at kind of food and nature so well, that's cool. Yeah. So you just get to go back and visit again. That's pretty awesome. I uh, yeah, there's I've been to Santa Fe a number of times. Yeah. Found different things to cover each time. Well, I mean, is there even like if you go to North Dakota, depending on what time of the year, it's a whole different experience between because I, I won't visit I have friends that live up in Montana and, and North Dakota. They're like, come up and visit. I'm like, it's negative 27 right now there. I'm, I'm not going there when it's in the negatives. It's not happening. Yeah. So I've done Quebec. Um, this is the first time I did Quebec for travels with Charlie, but I did it twice for equa trekking okay. once in the fall, once in the winter. And now I just went in the summer. So I've done three different seasons in yeah. Quebec. And they, and they definitely have different seasons. So, I mean, it's a different show every time you go there. Skiing, dog sledding, fall yeah. horseback riding, apple picking. So summertime, they've got this really cool new France festival and a lot of different experiences, depending on when you're going there. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. I mean, you know, Wisconsin's the same way. You go in the summertime, it's a different experience than winter. I could do so many episodes in L.A., how about, uh, what do you think of uh, like Nashville and Tennessee? It's kind of the same way. It's like. Tennessee's yeah. on my radar. It's on my list. I, I actually really want to go and do uh, probably music and maybe some architecture. There's some food. really interesting architecture and food would be great. Yes. I, I know. I know a couple of the places you're going to go to. So my, you my, might my, have to recommend. My, my daughter, um. Yeah, we I've got for some reason I got a lot of friends that live in the Nashville area. And then my daughter lives um the one that's pregnant uh is in just north of Knoxville. Okay. So so we've been to Tennessee a few times now and it's the the food, the music. I mean it when you it, have you, you you've been to Nashville, right? No, I've not been. My brother lived there for a while and I have not visited. You, you walk down Broadway at, at ten o'clock in the morning on a Saturday and all you hear is live music. And like there's they have uh, like Jason Aldean's and Kid Rock's place and they, there's three levels and there's a live band on all three levels playing at the same time. That sounds great. Oh yeah, it's just and that's all day long till like two in the morning. That sounds really fun. I would definitely no. I, that's that's on my agenda for yeah. some point coming up. Yeah, you got to go there. That's might it. be this year. It might be this year. I'm looking at it. 
because I'm doing Alabama, Louisiana. So I'm also charting what else I could do nearby. Yeah, well, just up from Alabama. <coughs> That'd be an easy one or mm -hmm. easier. Nothing's easy, but. <laughs> and, uh, well, what's the, what, what's the best way for my, my listeners to see what you have coming up? So look on your, look for us on your local PBS station, Travels with Darlie, Run Create TV, and then just Google because online, Ovation TV, Journey, Wondrium, you know, Roku, Samsung TV Plus, all of those, Apple TV, you can find the series and look at old episodes, check out what's coming up in the new episodes and follow me. I'm at Darlie Newman and at Travels with Darlie on social media as well. You're everywhere. Work, working on it. There's a lot of places to be now, so. Never enough. Well, I appreciate the time and uh, I can't wait to watch. start watching the full episodes. I've watched a lot of the, the previews, so I'm ready to go. Thank you. Yay. Yeah. I, know, and I can't wait to see you in LA this year. If if you're there when I'm, when I visit, so. Do the premiere party and, and uh, we'll make it happen. Even if it's a, a post premiere, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. You know, we'll just have, get, have a get together. That would be great. Yeah. I'd yeah, love to. Cool. All right. Well, thanks for the time, Darlie. And uh, I'm sure I'll talk to you soon. Sounds good. Thanks.